Good Saturday morning, everyone. Welcome back to Weather on the Go, all your weather coverage. We have more severe weather to talk about today, including large hail, damaging winds, and tornadoes possible. That actually will extend to Sunday as well. And then a strong storm system with heavy rainfall, possible flash flooding, and strong winds will occur across the East Coast and the Northeastern United States through this weekend into early next week. And then an early May preview. We'll go over temperature, precipitation, and severe weather trends later on in today's video. But going back to yesterday, it was a very active day across the Southern Plains. In fact, we had many hail reports across Central and East Texas, including even one tornado reported as well. So we had 63 total severe weather reports going back to your Friday, April 28th. So definitely a busy day. But another busy day is on tap. As we go into this afternoon, we have another slight risk for severe weather down here across Southern Georgia and in North Central Florida, and this does cover the Panama City area, Tallahassee, over there to Jacksonville, the Gainesville, Florida area, Orlando, and then even farther south toward the Tampa Bay region later on this afternoon, including the threat for tornadoes. If you live in these green or brown shaded areas, you have a 2 to a 5% shading of tornadoes across Florida here into portions of Georgia. So definitely want to be on high alert for tornado potential later on today. But if you're new to the channel and you like detailed weather breakdowns on North America, including Southern Canada, the United States, and the tropics, now is the time to press the subscribe button down below. I put out a video each and every morning at 9 a.m. on this channel, so definitely appreciate all the new subscribers out there. And it's also very important to press the like button, the thumbs up button down below the video. It helps to get all of this weather information out to as many people as possible. So I also appreciate all the likes out there as well. But looking at the severe weather setup, this afternoon we have dew points rising well into the 60s and lower 70s across southern Georgia and Florida here. And that will provide plenty of moisture and instability for thunderstorms. The instability values will be up over 2,000 joules per kilogram again across southern Georgia into Florida. So plenty of energy in which these storms can start to develop in. So going through the noon time frame, we don't have much going on. Maybe a few thunderstorms up here into the Panama City, Apalachicola, and Tallahassee regions. Other than that, much of southern Georgia and the southeast will be pretty dry around the midday time frame, but that changes this afternoon. We'll have one line of thunderstorms with damaging winds, large hail, and a few tornadoes possible move through Georgia into Florida through the mid-afternoon hours, and then we'll We'll be turning our attention back to the west as we have another line of storms developing into Mississippi and western Alabama that will move across the southeast through this evening. And this will be a little bit more less organized, but we will still see some supercells mixed in here overnight. So we could still see some rotating storms and also some damaging winds and large hail as this traverses through Alabama to northwestern Florida and southwestern Georgia through the midnight time frame. And then this will arrive across South Carolina here and coastal parts of Florida and Georgia along the outer banks there of those areas getting through the 6 a.m. time frame on your Sunday morning. But then going into Sunday, Sunday, we have another threat. Again, four severe storms, two separate areas we're watching for slight risk. We have a slight risk up here in the yellow shaded color across southeastern Virginia, eastern North Carolina, and then a secondary slight risk area in the yellow down here into south central Florida going through your Sunday time frame. And even the threat for tornadoes as well. So southeastern Virginia getting down through the Raleigh region, Fayetteville down into the Wilmington area. Definitely watch out for some tornadoes going through your Sunday time frame. This is a north North Carolina, and then a secondary area farther to the south. Again, this is a different graphic than I would uh, wanted to show you, but this is across southern portions of Florida. There will be some tornado potential down here as we go through your Sunday time frame. So again, going through Sunday, we have some ongoing storms at the beginning of the period across central Florida, Tampa Bay, on up there toward Orlando, Daytona Beach. Watch out for some strong winds, some hail, maybe a spin-up tornado. We got some rain and storms farther north again across the Carolinas through the 7 a.m. time frame. As this low pressure system starts to wrap up a little bit, it's going to have some instability and some wind shear to work with. So a few tornadoes and even some damaging winds and hail will be possible through the noon time frame on Sunday across Virginia, getting into eastern North Carolina around the Raleigh region. And that will start to wrap its way farther to the north as we go through Sunday evening. This is 6 o'clock and we're starting to dry out across much of the southeast 
during this period. But as the system moves up the East Coast, it's going to be interacting with a deep trough up here across the Great Lakes region. So at, on Sunday morning, we got all this energy down here across the Carolinas, Georgia, and North Florida. But you can see that trough really deepening up here across the Great Lakes and southeastern Canada on Sunday morning. And this starts to get ingested into that trough, that system that we're talking about this weekend across the southeast. This trough eats that system up here across the Great Lakes and becomes one massive storm by Sunday night and going through Monday morning. And this really will take us even into Tuesday morning as well. So definitely a very slow moving and strong storm system up here across the northeastern United States. And this will also be strong enough to produce some colder air down here in the low levels in the 850 millibar layer. This is just a few thousand feet above our heads. By Sunday night, you can see these blue anomalies showing up. We got some northerly, northwesterly flow as the system really wraps up across the Great Lakes, and we're going to be seeing some colder air aloft. So that means temperatures will be colder as well. So these are your near surface temperatures by Sunday night. We're down into the lower and middle 30s across especially the central and western Great Lakes, and it gets even colder going into your Monday morning time frame with temperatures maybe as cold as the upper 20s up up here into northern Wisconsin and the UP of Michigan. So this definitely will support some snowfall from the cloud all the way to the ground here in some areas, if not a rain-snow mix. So you can see that through the midday hours on your Sunday. We got rain and snow up here across Ontario, getting down through the UP of Michigan into northern, perhaps even central Wisconsin as well. Meanwhile, we have all rain across the I-95 corridor into the northeast and the mid-Atlantic. That will lift up across portions of Boston into New York City on up into Albany, New York, going through the evening hours on Sunday. And then we still have the snowfall falling up toward the Thunder Bay region into Ontario, farther south toward Lake Superior, northern and central Wisconsin. Definitely seeing at least some snow or a mix of rain and snow into Sunday evening. That continues more or less through your Monday, Monday evening as well as this snowfall starts to wrap up across the Traverse City area, getting down toward Detroit, maybe even the Kalamazoo area there in Michigan by Monday evening. And then that continues with snow showers on and off with some rain and snow mix across the central Great Lakes going into Tuesday morning. So definitely a prolonged system up here. It does not have a lot of uh, movement to it. So so it's definitely going to be sticking around, keeping the cold air in place through early next week. But looking at the total rainfall accumulation, now through Tuesday, early next week, on May 2nd, this is how much rainfall you can expect. So anywhere in the blue and purple shaded colors from Maine all the way down to Florida, we could be seeing over an inch of rain with some localized areas, especially the I-95 corridor into the northeast from Boston to New York City, northern New Jersey, and back into Pennsylvania. Yeah, we could be talking about three or four inches of rain just going through early next week and that will be causing some concern for flash flooding so today into Sunday morning the flash flooding concern will be primarily down here in the slight risk area into southeastern Alabama southern Georgia and northern Florida but then that will lift up across the mid-Atlantic and the northeast here as we go into your Sunday and Monday time frame, getting in towards early next week. So definitely be on the lookout for some flash flooding potential. But beyond the system, this is going to be producing some cooler air. So your temperature anomalies to start the work week next uh, next week on Monday, May 1st, will be well below normal. Temperatures will be 15 degrees below normal, while the west coast will start to see some warmer weather with above normal temperatures there across across the Intermountain West and parts of the West Coast to start the week. That ridge will begin to build a little bit farther to the east. So southern Canada, the northern plains, the central plains will begin to see more above normal temperatures by the middle of next week. This is on Wednesday, May 3rd, while we still have below normal anomalies across the east coast here as well. It will start to see a little bit of some changes on Friday, but that will be brief as we have another cold front diving down from north to south across the eastern two-thirds of the country next weekend, bringing more below normal temperatures on Saturday and especially on Sunday down here all the way to the Gulf Coast and portions of the Southeast. So definitely another reprieve back to the colder air. So looking here at your Monday time frame, these are your high temperatures, 40s and 50s, all across the northern and northeastern United States and southeastern Canada, where the warmer weather will be farther to the south across the immediate Gulf Coast 
or the desert southwest. But as we go into the middle of the week, like we mentioned on Wednesday, May 3rd, that ridge will begin to move its way farther east. So we'll be warming up in a big way across, especially the Great Plains. We'll be back into the 70s here. But then going into Friday, you can start to see the cold front start to develop up here into the upper Midwest, driving temperatures back down into the 50s. But it'll be heating up in a big way down into southern Florida here in central Texas. Both areas could be into the 90s. Heat and Texas could be approaching 95 degrees in a few areas or higher, especially down toward the Rio Grande Valley on Friday. Heat index values could be up near 100 degrees down here. But then as we go into Saturday, more 90s for Texas, but that cold front makes its way farther to the south. So that 50 degree line makes it farther south into Kentucky, the lower Missouri Valley. And then even on Sunday, we got some 60s out here, but still below normal for this time of year going in towards next weekend. And it also looks below normal with our precipitation outlook. So this is Thursday, May 4th through Monday, May 8th. This is the following Monday here, and we still have well below normal precipitation expected across the upper Great Lakes region into the Midwest, but the active weather will be across the West Coast with these troughs moving in and the subtropical jet remaining activated. So some above normal precipitation again across portions of the West Coast, getting into the Southern Plains and then into the Southeast during that period. And that really remains largely the case going through the second week into May with the below normal precipitation across the Northeast United States and then the active weather remaining in those very same areas across the West Coast, parts of the Great Plains and then down across Texas and the immediate Gulf Coast as well. So definitely still a very persistent weather pattern going through the second week there into May. And looking at the severe weather forecast from May 1st through the 7th, I do think it's possible we still see severe weather in the very same areas where we've seen a lot of hail, a lot of damaging winds, and a few tornadoes of recent. I think those areas will be very similar going into the first week in May across portions of Kansas, back into the front range here of the Rockies into New Mexico and Colorado. That will trickle its way farther south and east into Texas and the Dixie Alley region. But as we go into the second week in May, as we see especially toward Mother's Day weekend, we see more dew points rising farther to the north, more energy and instability. So I think it's more likely we see severe weather across the Arklatex and then up into the lower Missouri Valley during this time frame. And severe weather could be possible farther north, getting toward the Twin Cities, central Wisconsin, maybe into South Dakota as well during this period. So that will definitely be something to watch as we get closer toward the middle of May. Well, if you guys want additional weather forecast updates along with this channel, press the description down below. You can follow me on Twitter at hweather420. I definitely appreciate it. I also appreciate everybody watching me each and every morning here on these videos. Be sure to like the video down below. Give it a thumbs up. Leave any comments, questions, and concerns below. I'll get to those later on today. Subscribe to the YouTube channel if you're new and hit the notification bell to get all of my daily weather forecast updates on this channel. Have a great Saturday, everybody. A great weekend, and I will see you all in the next video.